All right, so let's take care about that uh, shader, uh, that anisotropic shader for the uh, uh, some parts of that wristband. So first, let me hide those upper rings here, and then uh, let's turn on the wristband connection here, and let's also turn on the wristband. <coughs> so on those parts here, we um, the center parts. If I go to object mode. On the center parts, we have the chrome shader, right? And um, yeah, Maya's slowing down here. Um, excuse me for that. So something is going on. Okay, so we want to create um, an anisotropic shader for this guy here and for for those guys, right? And um, to do this, um, let's go to Hypershade. And then let's create an anisotropic here. So with that selected, let me uh, zoom in on that. OK, so uh, with that selected, hit Control A. And then we say we want to change some settings here. So let's dial down the diffuse here to 0.2. And um, let's go down and change uh, the angle here of the specular shading to 180 degrees. And we also might want to change some something down here. So first of all, let's create um, a Maya 2D texture. And let's create a noise, a 2D noise texture. OK, so again, let's. Um, Let's delete the projection node and the place 3D texture here. And then let's take a look at the noise node here. So <coughs> with that um, selected, let's change some settings here. Let's uh, change the threshold here to something like 0.13 and the amplitude to 0.15 and uh, the ratio to something uh, something like 0.8 and uh, the frequency to 1.777. So I'm using the same settings as I used uh, when I did the the watch the first time. So I'm looking right now at the another monitor here where I have that scene file opened. Um, so now when I change here the frequency to something like 15.8. And yeah, so another thing I changed. Um, so the next uh, thing we have to change is here under the uh, place 2D texture node here. So now we go in and say we want to uh, the repeat UV. Um, we want to repeat this 30 times in U and 0 0.05 times in V. And then we get this nice uh, yeah kind of look here. And now we drop this um, noise node here into the anisotropic, and down here under mental under the mental ray tab, you find the MI reflection blur. So we are using a shader uh, trick if you want to. So just middle mouse and drag this onto the MI reflection blur. blur. Okay. So with that done, yeah, we have that anisotropic here in place, and that should work fine. So now let's uh, let's give it a name and let's call this um, ni shader. So with that shader created, let's drop it here onto those pieces. But we only want to um, have the parts. Um, so let me let me switch here to the uh, texture uh, editor. So it might be a little bit easier to see. So we don't the sides here. Uh, they should have a chrome shader, right? So we only want the 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 faces here to have that anisotropic. So with those faces selected, go right click and say assign existing material the ni shader. Okay. So now when I go in um, and say 
uh, with the U in the UV texture editor. Um, now let me uh, select that object first, and then select all the rest of the faces here of that guy, all of those. And there we say assign existing material, and this time our chrome shader, the the first the, the main chrome shader, we can put that on. So what that does now is, or should do, is we have the anisotropic here and the chrome shader on the sides. Okay, so we have to do this um, for all the pieces here. So let me uh, show you that with uh, this guy here as well. So go to uh, Texture Editor, select all of those faces here, and then say right click, assign existing material, the anise shader. And again, if you go to the UV texture editor and you select all the rest of the faces that we didn't select uh, the last time, all of those, and say assign existing material chrome shader, chrome shader main. Okay, and that's what we're going to do uh, for all the pieces here. So, yeah, let me pause the video and I'll be back when I'm done with that. Okay, so yeah, we are coming closer to the end, finally, finally to the end of this uh, tutorial here. So I put, um, like I did that in the last uh, minutes here, I put the anisotropic shader here on those faces and on this side I put that chrome shader. And when I was done uh, with this side, actually I was going in deleting, uh, deleted uh, the whole geometry here on, on, on this side here, deleted that and then again took this geometry and um, duplicated that and then scaled it ne negative one and z. Um, all right so mm, with this done here um, we need one final step our uh, final rendering um, but before we do this so let's uh, first um, yeah select all of those objects here on that layer and uh, yeah let's uh, hit uh, three to go to uh, low uh, smooth version and now um, yeah, so this is where it starts um, um, getting heavy in your scene. So before we want to render, so let me hit uh, four to go to wireframe mode. It's uh, easier for Maya and for my system. Okay, now we uh, need to turn on the knobs. Um, I select all the objects in that layer and hit the three as well. Uh, turn on the rubber boats again. I'm selecting all this stuff in that layer. Uh, hit 3 to go to smooth version if I haven't done it before. So turn on the wristband lock and again um, hit 3 to smooth that out. And that's what I'm gonna do with all the parts here. So I will bring all the parts in and um, go to smooth version. Um, but there are only uh, one, uh, some pieces that we don't want to smooth out. Um, those numbers. Those numbers that we created for the um, for the inner uh, holes here, the 10 and so on. So I don't want to smooth uh, those out because uh, those look uh, some kind of ugly if you smooth those out, okay? All right, so I'll be back um, when, I, um, when I'm done with bringing everything in here and uh, smoothing that out uh, by hitting three besides those numbers. And when I'm done with that, I'll be back and then we actually start our final render here.